Hello, mutants. I'm Mutisha, the movie goddess, and you're watching Mutant TV. <laughs> If you're not MVP, it's old Strebo here with you yet again. Calling together a meeting of the minds here on George A. Romero's birthday. The title of this video is Make Horror Not Bullshit. And uh, I thought today would be a good, good day to have this discussion because it has to do with George A. Romero. It has to do with modern horror and uh, where it is where it's going what we need to do as independent filmmakers as horror fans as horror filmmakers what we need to do to take it to where it needs to be and that is everywhere in every home in every school in every courthouse <laughs> we need uh, horror films playing non-stop but seriously, yeah. George Romero, big, big influence on me. Another guy that I didn't even know was such an influence until I got more into, you know, my awareness as a horror fan, so to speak. But there's a picture. Let's get that to show up. That's me at the sign outside the Carolina Theater in Durham where they're gonna they're playing Retro Phantasma. This was in 2010. It was for the premiere of George A. Romero's Survival of the Dead. It was one of the earliest screenings, if not I do believe the first theatrical screening in um, North America where people paid to go see it. Survival of the Dead and they played uh, Night of the Living Dead afterwards in 35 millimeter. But before all of that they played Devil Comes Down, which is our little zombie film that we made as an homage for Romero, that we made uh, as an entry into the American Zombie Film Contest, hosted by Romero when he came to North Carolina. You know, the story that goes down in legend, so to speak. When we legend, uh, we uh, famously lost the contest. But, you know, hey, it's not, not always who runs, but you gotta look good while you're losing, at least. But... So that was that was a cool night when Devil Comes Down played before Survival of the Dead. Whether you like that movie or not, which I do, I thought it was a fun satire, um, very funny with just excellent actors all through it, just really excellent character actors. So good, entertaining movie. But our little zombie film got to play in front of it. So make bullshit not horror. Why do I say that? Because one of the prevailing memes in the horror community today is that horror sucks, especially as it pertains to mainstream horror, um, which incidentally this weekend um, saw the release of The Woman in Black, which actually I think it looks pretty cool. And if you want to call it horror, which I mean I don't have a problem with people that do, um, the Underworld Awakening that came out last week, which I don't really care for that series at all, to put it lightly, but I gotta keep my rants focused, and uh, we're gonna rant about why people need to stop making bullshit and start making more horror today. Um, and the other meme is that indie horror sucks, like when, for example, Creepy Kentuckian posted that on Facebook, and he said, Indie Horror sucks. We're not going to review any horror films anymore. Um, I responded to that sentiment online through video first, um, which was just my side of it, and especially as it pertains to the fact that there is a lot of sucky independent horror films and that people should be more conscious of quality control and you know just making the films entertaining and appealing to an audience and not just their friends because I see a lot of really good indie horror everywhere I look and um, I like some of the stuff in the mainstream you know, probably more than 
the people on the dead pit boards do or you know my buddies at, at exploited cinema they don't they hate the mainstream you know um but i go see the stuff that interests me like at halloween i went to see the thing prequel which it is a prequel and i loved it i was blown away by it and it got a really mixed reaction from from the horror community at large um, people either really loved it or they really hated it and I guess that's what you want from any kind of horror film. You want people to love it or hate it. So, hmm. Before I get into this rant, because it's going to be a rant at one point, so I'm going to say something that I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to try to be nice and fair and even through the whole thing. <clears throat> but my buddy uh, Bat32 got me stirred up because he invited me on uh, the latest episode of Exploited Cinema to uh, talk about the Mad Monster Party Film Fest, which anything I say has nothing to do with the Mad Monster Party Film Fest. It has nothing to do with my buddies at MVP. It, o it only has to do with my opinion, just me and me alone. Um, me and myself alone. So, whatever I say, just take it that way. But as it pertains to my interaction with the fan community and how I talk about projects or properties or you know characters or storylines or anything like that i always try to follow a certain set of guidelines that were given to me by my mentor rick, rick davis who um is a comic book artist he was he was anchor on a lot of projects um big projects in the 80s and uh he he always told me he said never never insult an actual you know book or movie or anything like that because it's always somebody's favorite you know it doesn't matter if I hate it somebody out there it will be their favorite and the other was never insult or make fun of fans of any kind of movie I mean because that's just it I mean everybody's different everybody's different that's that's the good thing and that's the bad the bad thing about it because there's so many people that are just into some of the worst things but then there's others who have, for lack of a better word, taste or whatever, which you know, I'm sure plenty of people w wouldn't count myself in them among those numbers, but that's the way we all are. We all like our things, even with your best friends. If you talk to your best friend, um, <clears throat> you, the two of you might see a movie and you'll love it, they'll hate it, or one of your favorite movies is something they hate, one of their favorite movies is something you hate, you know, vice versa, it's just the way it goes. We're all different, everybody's different, but, but make horror not bullshit. That, that pertains to two things. One, it pertain, pertains to remakes, especially at the indie level. Okay, I've been reasonably accepting of I think my white balance is going in and out. I've been reasonably accepting of remakes from mainstream. I mean, those are going to come along regardless because when somebody decides they're going to put 10, 15 million into a property, they just do it. It's going to happen. And uh, then you either, you either like it or you don't. I mean, because you always have something like David Cronenberg's The Fly or John Carpenter's The Thing, which, you know, in some ways, some would say, and I'm probably among those numbers, that both of those both of those movies eclipse the original versions of those those movies or adaptations of stories, because they're based on stories and other The Fly, Case of the Fly was a remake too. But That's John Carpenter and David Cronenberg, but where I'm not forgiving of remakes is at the indie level. I just I don't understand it. So make horror not bullshit. I think indie remakes are bullshit, plain and simple. And also these over-the-top black comedies that are just not funny to anybody except your friends. I mean, we need a real, we need a story in there. I mean, I don't want to 
outright broadly condemn all black comedies at the independent level because I know I've tried to do black comedies myself like see for chaos was always a, sl a slasher black comedy so mix those elements together but at its core it was a slasher and it had this strong slasher structure to it but a lot of black comedies are just bullshit it's just people getting together acting stupid in front of the camera over the top bad effects bad acting Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Most often, or not, it doesn't work. I call them tromedies. To me, they look like they're trying to, to be trauma light. And, uh, you know, out of respect for the people that are my friends that are doing these things, and <laughs> ones that I know, ones that I don't know. I'm not going to name anybody, but I know if, if you watch independent films, you've seen some of them, you know what I'm talking about. Where you could tell, like, maybe, yeah, they were having fun making the movie, but there's not, there's nothing deeper to it. It's just there's a lot of stupidity involved. Not that it has to be deeper or have meaning or what have you, but at least, you know, a level of attention to the craft and also taking one's audience serious, whether you're trying to entertain them through comedy or horror. Or terror which let which leads me to something you know that Nick was saying to me and we didn't get to get into it too much because I wanted to promote the festival not not necessarily argue about independent horror because from what I understand this is a clip show it'll be out on Tuesday and um, there's a big segment of he and I talking about independent horror from another episode that just got cut and he put it together with this clip show of, of other episodes with, with things that they got cut from other episodes to make a full episode and then I, I helped record the outro to it so um, but he says he said that now if I'm misquoting you bat 32 I apologize you know feel free to comment here <laughs> I'll add an annotation but he said that horror indie horror filmmakers basically shouldn't try to make horror they should they should try to make something goofy and comedic because it's so hard to make something that's really scary and I agree with him on the principle that yes it is hard to make something scary but know that we don't need to make comedy just because making scary is hard that's what this genre is about it's about making horror terrifying people horrifying them it's two different effects night of the living dead dawn of the dead day of the dead all independent productions last house on the left friday the 13th texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> four words chainsaw two words the original title um <laughs> night of the living dead of course the big 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 one evil dead Evil Dead 2, even Army of Darkness was was independent to a certain degree, though they got De Laurentiis behind them. But um, on and on and on, Halloween. It all comes from somebody having an idea of how to tell a horrific story, having that intention, and then just experimenting on how to do it. None of these guys knew these movies were going to be trend-setting, groundbreaking, or phenomenal seller. They wanted them to, obviously, they wanted them to perform well, but nobody could predict exactly how these properties were going to take off. Night of the Living Dead, one of the most influential horror films of all time, and I was talking to Nick about Kim Newman's nightmare movies. I don't know if I ever properly explained it because I wasn't, I didn't think we were going to go into that direction with the in that conversation, but but in it I said that Newman's thesis is that this is horror geek out nerd stuff. So if, so if you don't want to listen to it, turn it off. But if you're into that kind of thing, we'll keep going because um, we're trying to get to the horror, not the bullshit, right? <laughs> Newman's thesis is Night of the Living Dead started modern horror because at the end before before Night of the Living Dead basically every horror film ends with evil being banished and the status quo being returned 
okay, and and end up night living dead that doesn't happen you know spoilers 30 second jump if you will the lead actor the lead hero band dies you know the zombies are still out there for all we know the world is is turned on its head okay a lot of things happen that we weren't expecting that that left us in a very uneasy place by the end of the movie but prior to that you know, basically, there were always villagers that run into town with torches to chase off Frankenstein. And once Frankenstein, you know, fell into the water or into the burning building or what have you, peace was restored. Everything was okay. Romero changed all that. Not to mention the fact he changed, you know, independent guerrilla filmmaking by making the model of how we as <clears throat> individuals can group together with like-minded individuals, make a production company set about with the intent to make a movie everybody can put their best effort into it get their money back and possibly make a profit if it's a good project so yeah there's there's a million different ways this conversation could go so if I lose track of it every now and then you have to forgive me but he said make comedy instead because it's easier but you know what if we do that where is the next horror film going to come from? Where is the next great horror film going to come from? The next Halloween. The next Silence of the Lambs. The Silence of the Lambs was a big project, so that's probably not a good idea. Good example, but we'll say Blair Witch Project. Like it or not, made a shit ton of bank. Money walks. Money talks bullshit walks. So, you know, Paranormal Activity 1, 2, 3. All low budget big big returns even uh, this devil inside the devil inside I didn't go see it because I thought the trailer looked like bullshit but it made a shit ton of bank um, at least 60 million at last count might be up towards 70 or 80 million now um, so kudos to those guys they made it for less than a million that's always big ups for that and at least with all those properties they were all something original and new <sighs> At, at the Hollywood mainstream top level, remakes are a flat sign of creative bankruptcy in that the producer, the producers and the studios, they don't have new ideas for stories and they also don't have faith in people with new ideas for stories because there's so much money put into not only making a movie but in promoting it that there's just too much to lose too much to risk on an unknown quantity like an independent filmmaker okay so you can at that level you can almost forgive the studios which are conglomerate you know corporations essentially you can forgive them for being creatively bankrupt okay hopefully they'll swing back around where they invest in some more individuals instead of trying to punch them out with a cookie cutter and fit in these, you know, MTV type video filmmakers like um, Marcus Nispels, the first guy that pops to mind. Um, and there, there are a few others too, but he's the most egregious of them all. I'm just not, I've tried to like his movies. I think the only one I've come close to liking is, is Friday the 13th. 2009 which I did like I thought I, I enjoyed that but even then you could see it had problems because of uh, the script and the production and the fact that it was a remake but but it worked in the ways that uh, it could have been a sequel kind of so but that was a mainstream production it was going to get made regardless whether it was Nis Bell directing it or me because I'll tell you 50 million, I'll go direct it, okay? I gotta eat too. I'd love to be able to take care of my family. <laughs> no bullshit there. But at the independent level, meaning you don't have somebody handing you a check saying, go make, go make this movie. You don't have a big studio saying that, that, hey, we're gonna make this movie. You go do it now. You have to go around and you have to fundraise yourself, whether it's through crowdsourcing on Indiegogo or Kickstarter or just old-fashioned old-fashioned door-to-door you know pitching sales pitch you know um, you're the one raising the money so I don't I don't agree with 
you're going to raise money to put it into a remake. <sighs> this all came about because of Matt Cloud's Night of the Living Dead. Okay. Which I don't know if you've heard of it, Night of the Living Dead, but I promised Robert, the, the uh, director of photography, I would be fair, so I'm being fair. <clears throat> which is why the title of this video is Make Horror Not Bullshit, not Matt Cloud's Night of Living Dead is Bullshit. Which if I'd have done that on YouTube and then put it on the blog and then sit it out on tw Twitter and Facebook and made a whole ton of backlinks and it would have shown up on the first page rank of uh, anytime anybody searched for Night of Living Dead 2012 or Matt Cloud's Night of Living Dead. That would have been unfair of me. So accept this as a compromise if you will but I find myself only doing this only breaking the rules given to me by my mentor Rick Davis God bless his soul he's still here kicking strong and kicking ass um, but he's not doing comics anymore which is sad but that's okay I mean we all have our our time we do them in stop but we're talking about night of the living dead night of the living dead the uh you know the big bang of modern horror especially independent horror Night of Living Dead influenced Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, Toby Hooper to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Wes Craven and Sean Cunningham to do Last House on the Left and Friday the 13th. You know, um, obviously John Carpenter was inspired. If you watch Assault on Precinct 13, boom, it's Night of the Living Dead in a police station. I know Night of the Living Dead is, is public domain so anybody can go make their own Night of the Living Dead and I know that as it pertains to this particular project that they quote unquote have Romero's approval whatever that means Romero's a cool dude he doesn't care one way or the other he's he's trying to do his own thing and I hope he's making another movie sometime soon um, but if you want to pay homage to a great movie okay and you're not the one responsible for bringing it to blu-ray or whatever the next technological innovation is going to be or it's holocube or what have you you're not the holocube adapter okay then there's nothing for you to do to homage it wear the t-shirt get a tattoo on your arm <laughs> you know uh get your picture taken with uh, the actors from it Get Romero's autograph. That's how you homage it. Buy their stuff, okay? If you really want to homage it, go buy, you know, the Millennium Edition of the Night of the Living Dead DVD or the Blu-ray, okay? The, the ones that are officially approved by Romero. Because he's the guy that showed us how to do our own thing. He set the path. He charted the territory for us. He handed us the blueprint to how to how to get your movie off the ground. And also how to just how to make a proper modern horror film that's both horrifying, terrifying, and filled with real subtext to where it's telling a story at a deeper level whether the audience knows it or not but the audience is still going to be entertained at that surface entertainment bubblegum popcorn level but then there's something underneath it all and in the case of Night of the Living Dead there's a lot beneath it all okay and, and now it, it's been um, it's been immortalized in the Library of Congress I mean it's a lot of different places um, birthplace of modern horror yep the birth point, Genesis point, I'm not sure uh, the term is, is, is escaping me at the moment, but now, before I go any further, I don't know Matt Cloud. Matt Cloud is probably a cool dude, okay? He's just another filmmaker trying to do his own thing. He's been doing a lot of projects over the years, so he's thinking, hey, 
Night of the Living Dead is something we can we can get some recognition with. You know, I encourage everybody go like their page, share it with your friends. If you think it's a good idea, cool, whatever, go do it. Okay, God bless you all. But I will say, as a filmmaker, we need to be focusing on original, new ideas, putting stories out there, making real horror, terror, new ideas thing that really burns my ass about this whole thing and the only reason I mentioned this project but I'm leaving out the names of some other projects okay is because there's a there's a promo poster and I'm gonna save it off the of Facebook in case they take it down but it's a promo poster and it says Matt Cloud's Night of the Living Dead I mean Are you fucking kidding me? Matt Cloud is not leaving there. I mean, seriously? No. No, no, no. Even Tom Savini did a remake. I may have said this on the show. I may, it, even Tom Savini did a remake, and it was called George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Now, if you're worried about differentiating, differentiating your idea from Romero's idea, here's an easy way to do it. Write in original script with a different title other than Night of the Living Dead. And nobody will ever confuse the two. It won't happen. Believe me. I did it with Devil Comes Down. Devil Comes Down was my Romero homage. I didn't pander. There's no cutesy nods to character names or anything that happens in the movies the only <clears throat> link between the two in terms of the script between Romero's movies and, and our movie and Devil Comes Down is I have, they're called ghouls they're never called zombies and that was, that was my homage and that's the kind of homage that only real fans even know because in Night of the Living Dead they weren't called zombies, they were called ghouls. So the devil comes down, we call them ghouls. That's it. Um, created bankruptcy. Even on my own films, you'll never see, you know, Strebo Magic's Devil Comes Down or Strebo's Ghost. You don't even see a film by Strebo. It's always filmed by Mutantville Productions because of the number of people that put input into it and effort into it to make it happen. So, you know, so until that's like mandated on me by a studio, you'll never see me put a film by credit. Because there's too many people involved, too many people contributing. And, uh, Excuse me while I scratch my nose. Don't look. Um, I believe Eli Roth said the same thing or shares the same philosophy in that you won't see a, a film by Eli Roth because there's too many people that work on a film. Maybe it's not Eli Roth. Maybe it's Kevin Smith. It's probably Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, our uh, MVP's uh, 2011 Filmmaker of the Year, Kevin Smith. Yeah, never a film by because there's too many people involved. So. I like that. I like that philosophy. It, it's enough that you see that I wrote and I directed it. I mean, you should get the idea of my contributions from that because that, that covers a lot, and especially when I'm editing, too, you know. So, yeah, I mean, what do you want, guys? People are already saying horror sucks. People think indie horror sucks. So you're just giving up. Moving on to something that already has name recognition because you're tired of trying to make something original. I don't know. Honestly, to me, that just says quit. Just give up if that's the way you're going to go. Let's refocus. Let's do something original. Every time out, challenge yourself each time. Stop making bullshit. Stop making comedies. Let's try to make things scary again. If you see one of my movies and you think it's not not scary or it's stupid or lame or whatever, all you have to know, keep in mind, I did try to make it scary. I tried in some way or another. I might have put a boo scare in there, but I, tr I hopefully tried to put something in there that tried to 
get under your skin and make you think and feel and remember it later and make you you know shiver when you're under the covers where you think you're supposed to be safe you know so whether or not I was successful that's for the people to decide you know some people like my movies I guess some don't but same is true to everybody you know I wish the best to Matt Cloud and crew with their Night of the Living Dead, you know, I'm doing you guys a favor just by mentioning it here. And you won't ever see me mention it again on the blog, Facebook, Twitter, because I'm not going to support it. The only reason I even liked the page was because Robert Fillion decided he was going to go DP for them. I mean, you yeah, know, Robert, do what you got to do, man. But whatever, you know. I know guys like me, they're getting ready to shoot original scripts this year but it's kind of an example of it all I guess because filmmakers actors and filmmakers for the most part are all whores they're all chasing a check that's one thing we can be proud of here at MVP because we have no money we can't pay anybody so there you go we can hold ourselves our heads high with artistic integrity now Robert I, I give him a pass because he did just get finished he just finished shooting Athena which is his big indie project. In my mind, he should be at home right now working on it, finishing it to get it out to us instead of shooting this Night of the Living Dead trailer thing today. This abomination of a trailer. This. Uh, this toxic spill of a trailer. Creatively diseased, poisoned blight. On the creative spirit of horror fans across the world, the universe, even. <sighs> but go like their page. I'm trying to balance it right. <laughs> go like their page. I don't wish any of them ill will. Uh, good luck with your project. I wish everybody luck with their project. I always do. And. I try to think of ways that I can help people. This is the only way I can help this project is I'm, I'm burying it right now. Um, and then I'm going to walk away from it. And I'm sure I'm pissing off friends. I have a lot of friends that are working on it. You want me to say, guys? Um, you know, but I'm involved in this, this battle to the end. To the end. And I hate to say use a term like a battle or a war. When the world is in the state that it is, and there are real wars being fought, and lives being lost on both sides, and that's something that we take very, very seriously. But I'm going to use this as an allegory just for this circumstance. You have to forgive me this liberty, but you know we're in a war for the minds of free-thinking individuals everywhere, and especially a war for the minds of horror fans. <laughs> Those are the most important of the horror fans. Everybody else sucks. They don't appreciate horror. Who needs them? Though my mom doesn't like horror, so I love my mom. But it's a battle, guys. We give up the indie guys. Okay, we've already got guys like Dead Pit won't even review indie horror. They don't give a shit. They're like, we're tired of it. We're not gonna review anybody's shit anymore. Fuck everybody. Um, which you know, if that's their 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 decision on it, cool. You know, I always support the Dead Pit guys. And you've got the studios. Last year alone, how many remakes did they throw at us? Fright Night. Well, I hate to say the thing because it was a prequel, but everybody talked about it like it was a remake. Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, which actually I like that. I actually liked all three of those. But but they they could have been original. They could have actually been better if they were original work. Something like Tucker, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, you know. Um, or Hobo with a Shotgun. We had some really fiercely creative works that came out last year. Troll Hunter was another cool one. Um, you know, in horror wise, you know, stuff like Insidious, even those were fun, you know. Scary. Insidious did that thing where it made music creepy again, and that's always a really good atmospheric element. So big ups to James Wan. There's a guy always trying to do something original, for the most part at least. Though some people think Death Sentence was just a remake of of um Death, whatever. What's the name of it with um, Charles Bronson? But anyway, let's get that one. Right. 
these massive rants you just lose your lose your way along the way plus it doesn't help that i'm drinking but we're drinking to honor george romero's birthday happy happy birthday george keep making movies keep pumping them out zombie movies anything you want to make i'll, I'll definitely support him because you're the guy that paved the way I set the plate I paved the road for the rest of us to follow set the dinner table for the rest of us to eat at george romero now it's our responsibility to make some good damn use of this and it's not our responsibility is not to remake night of the living dead every year i mean we'll, we'll go remake it this year too we'll have you know let's have three four five six night of the living dead 2012s you know why do i say this because my mentor says don't don't shit talk people don't shit talk movies because nobody cares nobody else is talking about it Nobody else has talked about it. I'm the lone voice in the wilderness. You got to remind people, look, we are losing our audience. Yes, you. You are losing our audience because you're not trying. This is not an example of trying. You know. It doesn't matter if Romero blesses it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We need new original works. We need something for the filmmakers and the kids of 50 years from now to try to remake. We want to inspire them to remake. Okay, so that 50 years from now, somebody will come along like me and say, you assholes quit remaking stuff. Get back to trying to make something original. That's my challenge to you. Gauntlet is thrown. Um, you know, at MVP, we'll keep making independent horror. You know, we've got projects that are coming out on DVD this year. Tales from Mutantville that Robert Fillion helped on. So, Robert's a cool guy. He's trying to make a buck and make ends meet and, you know, pay off his equipment like everybody else. He's got to do what he's got to do. Can't fault him for it. I'm sure Matt Cloud is the same way. We're both cool stand up guys. This instance, their efforts are misdirected. And they've picked the wrong movie to remake. It's something they need to leave alone. If you want to show us how much you really love Night of the Living Dead, the original, change the title of this movie. Make it something else completely. Show us those homages underneath. You know, like the Devil Comes Down Ghoul homage. That was our only homage. There were no characters named Barbara. You know. There was no, well, you get the idea. There, no recreations of anything from Romero's movies. It was all just little homages. Though we did have uh, one of those zombie catcher poles from Day of the Dead. So that's pretty cool. But, you know, that's a functional thing. I mean, that makes sense in a world. A world gone zombie, as I always say. So, I don't know. I say my recommendation, always support original independent horror always because uh, the next the next best thing is coming out of left field it always does so be ready for it be ready to embrace it to celebrate it because it's going to come from a direction we don't see it's not going to come from movies that have been made in the past they've already done their thing they're moving on and you know I, I said something earlier about the Cronenberg and Carpenter's remakes but you know that's Cronenberg and Carpenter you know, if Guillermo del Toro wanted to do one or, you know, Quentin Tarantino wanted to remake Night of the Living Dead, we'd say, okay, well, whatever, we'll let him try. <sighs> but any guys scraping for money, put it into an original idea. Have faith in your own product again. Believe in it. Go back to trying to make something primal, terrifying, horrifying technically well made all of these things original challenging challenging for you challenging for the viewers challenging to the genre we've got to push boundaries yeah, got to push boundaries but, I don't know <laughs> this is one of those rants where I can go and go and go for a while um, I keep having to bring myself back to reminding myself that we're all part of one big horror community and we all need to work together. So 
it makes me a hypocrite in going out and saying this and you know singling out somebody like Matt Cloud's Night of the Living Dead, but that's the one that I'm going to single out. But I was fair to them because we need to make horror not bullshit. <clears throat> In the end, it comes down to the genre doesn't, the subgenre doesn't matter, the genre doesn't matter. But have an idea for a story that comes from yourself, from somewhere within, that it's a little spark that lights a fire, that, that every time you fan it, it, it builds and grows stronger, and it makes you more excited. And it's your own idea that's the one you need to follow because those are the ideas that bear real fruit and they go out to the world so anyway this is strebo from mutantville.com thanks for joining me you're watching mutant tv